Welcome to this new tutorial about fixed networks, a computer mode for Satisfactory. Today we're going to talk about how you can interact with components with Lua. For this I have a simple setup with a computer case, a Lua CPU, a little bit of RAM and a constructor. So you can work a little bit more easily with the co uh, constructor. We're going to change the nickname of it to constructor. As we have already discussed, everything within Lua are values, and so it will be the constructor. So for now, we need to get the value of the constructor and store it in a variable, which is our placeholder so that we can use it later on in our program. To do that, we first need to tell Lua that we now want to have access to a variable. Let's call it constructor. And we want to set the value of this variable to something. And this is done with this equal operator. With this, we assign a new value on the right side to the variable on the left side. So what value do we want to store in the constructor? Well, the value of the constructor itself. The problem is we now need to get access to this value. How we can do this is very simple. We type in component. This is a library which contains many many different functions which we can now access to interact with the component network. So we now say dot because we now say okay we want to access a child, an item within this component library. And then we say proxy. This proxy function takes a string, uh, like uh, again, we have here expressions, and it takes like the first expression, or like it takes a list of expressions, and each, each expression has to evaluate down to a string or an array of strings. And these strings are just the IDs, the, adre uh, the address of the constructor. And this will then, uh, and the proxy function will then convert like the address of the constructor to the actual constructor value. So what we have to do is we have to provide the proxy function now a string containing the address of the constructor. We can now just click on the constructor list uh, in the component list over here onto the constructor to copy the address into the clipboard and then just place it in here. And now we have gotten uh, now we get the and uh, now we try to access the address of the constructor convert it with the proxy function convert it into a value store the value into the constructor variable so now we want to check if that's also uh, if that's right so we're going to use the print function which allows us to print values to the console and we just say okay constructor Print the value that is behind the constructor value because we have again expression and expression gets evaluated down to a value and we could just give it a variable name. So that means we need to uh, we, uh, evaluate down the variable name constructor to the value which is a build constructor mk1 which is this exact thing. So if you take now the network manager and have a look, you can see, build constructor mk1 underscore c. So this is our constructor. Now that we have access to the constructor, we also maybe want to read data or just simply set data of the constructor. For that we have to figure out what the constructor actually can do, so in which ways we can interact with it. So for that we can use the reflection tab. So we can just click on the small icon here, open reflection viewer, and we can see got the constructor here. These are all the functions and properties we can interact with. So for example, interesting, for example, will be in our case right now, standby. So this is a run is like a runtime uh, is a runtime parallel, okay? And we can write it. So the read only flag is not set, so we can even set this value. We can see, okay, the data type is a boolean, so this is a boolean value under uh, under it. So yeah, so we're now gonna try to access this. 
So we're going to we're going to want to print out the value. So we say constructor because we want to say okay we want to access now something of the constructor. And then we say dot. So do we say okay um, we want to access an item of the uh, of the constructor a, ch a child item. And now we just say stand by, which is the new variable name, the item name. We have figured out which is stand by, and we want to get the uh, value. So the print now evaluates down what this here is. So it uh, so it sees okay. Gonna access the constructor variable. Give me what the underlying value is. So this is technically a so-called user value, but you can see if viewed as a table. And then we use this um, this period to say okay, we want to access a child item of it uh, with the with the name with the key standby. And behind that, it then like it says okay, I want to try uh, try to access this, and now it just figures out okay, what's the value behind the constructor? This is a boolean value. Returns it to the print the, uh, so that the whole expression here. Evaluates down to just simply a boolean value. Now if we execute this, we can see, okay, standby is false. So what does this actually mean, the standby? So if we have a look at the reflection viewer, we can double click on standby. True if the factory isn't standby. So standby essentially is just this small little icon down here. So standby, this is currently activated, so it's not in standby. And if we now print this here, you can see false because it's not in standby. If we now turn this off, then it is in standby. You can see standby. And if we run this code now, okay, we see gets it down to true. So what is if we want to set the value? For this, we again just say, okay, we want to access the constructor standby. This evaluates down for now to um, to the variable standby, and we're gonna say okay. We want to set the value with our equal sign again. Now we can just provide a boolean value. So if we now provide false, this is now a boolean literal. So what happens here is, okay, first, like we have this whole expression, we can see, okay, the whole expression is like a variable set operation with the equal sign. So that means the left side has to evaluate down to a variable. The right side has to evaluate down to a value. So, this gets evaluated down, you see, okay, good here period, so the first thing, constructor, evaluate down the constructor var variable, which is the constructor value, then access, so then we have the period, so that means we now access a child of that, uh, construct uh, of the value of the constructor, uh, in the constructor variable, so the constructor variable gets evaluated down to a user data or a table, now we say, okay, we want to access a child of that user, uh, of that table, essentially, with the key standby, which is just like another variable. So then the standby variable within our constructor. And we're gonna set this to a value. The, so this expression here, which is just a boolean uh, literal, gets evaluated down to a boolean value containing false. So we're gonna set false. So if we have a look now, uh, right now, this is turned off. So standby is set to true. And if we run this code now, you can see standby. Okay, uh, standby is now false. If you turn this on to true, standby is activated. And again, false. Standby is deactivated. We can also, for example, call functions like this get recipe function, which is a member function, which returns a class recipe. So that with that we just simply get, so like if we have a look and what this function does, returns, uh, returns the currently set recipe of the manufacturer. So the constructor is also called a manufacturer and we get the recipe out of there. So how do we do that? For that we say constructor. And now there are two ways. The normal way is we now say colon get recipe. And then again, calling a function requires our brackets. And with that, we call the function get recipe of the constructor. So what happens here? We say uh, like what happens in this expression is okay. We say we're gonna try. We try to evaluate down that. So we uh, so we see okay. 
this here is a member function call through that column so that means okay we have to figure out a ta like a table or a user data or whatever at the value of the variable on the left uh, on the on the left side so we see okay this is constructor so that means constructor gets a date down to a table user data or whatever so in our case the value of the constructor and then we again just like with the period um, we access the key value of the table of that constructor value with the key name get recipe and this value that returns out of there we're gonna uh, should be a function because we then call it so right now we don't know what so it does something we just get some data but we don't print it so we're gonna try to print now that value and if we run this you can see we get a recipe class so okay uh, so this is not really helpful in any way like we don't we still don't know what actual recipe we have set we just like because this here just simply tries to print the be next best thing and in this case it's just simply the data type um it got uh, it got so which is a class recipe uh recipe class yeah so how do we get now the name of the recipe because like if we have a look at the constructor you can see okay recipe is iron plate so i want to like now get iron plate how we can do that so for that we're gonna go to the reflection viewer again search for our uh, constructor or well, could go with the opening and you can see we got here this uh, recipe we can now double click on the recipe you can see a struct that holds information about a recipe in its class means uh, it means don't use it as an object use it as a class type because we got here uh, class functions and that sort of stuff and class properties we don't care about member properties we care about class properties and there is for example internal name or just name so we're gonna try so we're gonna try to access now this variable like class properties can be like everything that has this dash class attached to it all these data types these if you have then access to the class properties and class functions not to the member properties and member functions but to the class functions and properties and one of these is name so what we're gonna do now is we say period name because we know okay this here evaluates down to the recipe class so to this here as a class type and now we're gonna try to access a variable called name of it so we're gonna try again period get like access the key like the uh, item the child item with the key name name and then just pr return it in the print so that we're gonna print it to the console if you run that now you can see iron plate because we now have an iron plate so if we change the recipe for example to iron rod and run that piece of code you can see iron rod an important difference to note here is the calling of member functions and class functions and stuff like that so if you have a look okay we, up here we got component.proxy but the reason why we use a period here to get access to uh, the proxy function is because component is not really an instance or something this is just a library it's just a table that holds just randomly functions the problem is with the get recipe the get recipe function when you call it has to be aware of the construct itself like here the proxy function itself does not care about the component library so that's why we can use here the period but in the get recipes case this is not the case get recipe cares what constructor called this function the get recipe function and for this there is a small little uh, shortcut by using colon instead of a period what it could also do instead which is a way long away is just provide the constructor as the first argument in the parameter list and use a period there and as a and as said as a shortcut you can just simply use a colon instead because if you now like like try to run this function with a period you can see you get an error 
bad argument. First argument to get recipe. Uh, build construct MK1 on a C expected. Got no value because like it tries to call the function without any parameters, but it requires the first parameter to be uh, the constructor. So we can just use constructor now here. And it would work. Uh, if, uh, you, if you type it right. Then it would work. Or you just simply use a colon instead. Because the colon just simply places the constructor's first argument in there. It's just a, sm a small little... Um, is it's just a small little syntactical sugar in Lua so that you can type that a little bit faster and then use it that way. So that's why when you are calling member functions of like constructors and stuff, use a colon. If you access properties, use a period. If you access properties, use a period. Always. And if you call library functions like from the component library use also a period i hope you now understand how you can interact with components within lua code and how you can call functions or just interact with properties and that sort of stuff thank you very much for watching i was kind of on from code from mr and say baba until next time and as always keep coding